हेलो एवरीबॉडी वेलकम एट अभिमन्यू आई एस द बेस्ट इंस्टीट्यूट फॉर द प्रेपरेशन ऑफ यू पी एस सी एंड स्टेट सिविल सर्विसेज एग्जामिनेशन विच हैज़ डिलीवर्ड मोर देन ट्वेंटी टू हंड्रेड सेलेक्शंस इन ए टाइम स्पेन ऑफ जस्ट ट्वेंटी थ्री ईयर्स सिंस इट्स बिगनिंग इन द ईयर You know, to innovate is a tradition at Abhimanyu IS. Following the same tradition, now at Abhimanyu IS, we have launched an extremely useful series on issues and analysis. In this series, we discuss and analyze those topics related with current issues, which are considered very much important for the purpose of. Uh, UPSC and state civil services main examinations no doubt the questions from these topics can be asked in the preliminary examination also main dr h s sidhu abhimanyu ias mein international relations and indian economy teach karta hu i have been mentoring civil services aspirants for more than 15 years and i have authored some books also for the upsc and state civil services examinations so today i am going to discuss a topic related with international relations which comes under general studies paper 2 of upsc civil services main examination the name of today's topic is russia ukraine war how can india strategize in the current scenario when the war between the russia and ukraine is going on and uh, many other things are happening in in the international scenario so in the wake of all this what are the challenges before india what are the important points which india needs to consider and uh, what should be india's strategy india ke samne aaj ke is uh, situation mein kya kya options banti hain so this is all which we will discuss in this today's lecture so आज की डिस्कशन स्टार्ट करने से पहले लेट मी टेल यू एट अभिमन्यू आई एस वी आर कमेंसिंग फ्रेश बैचेस फॉर यू पी एस सी एंड स्टेट सिविल सर्विसेज प्रिलिम्स एंड मेन्स एग्जामिनेशन टारगेटिंग ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री एंड ट्वेंटी फोर दिस विल बी ए वन ईयर कोर्स विच विल बी अवेलेबल थ्रू ऑफलाइन एंड ऑनलाइन मोड वन more important information is that now at abhimanyu is we are giving a 7 days free trial class if you want to join that you can click on the link given in the description so chaliye hum aaj ki discussion start karte hain let us consider this quadrilateral first so is quadrilateral mein char countries liye hain us russia china and india so first of all let us have a look at the current relations between the us and russia we all know that uh, the current relations between the us and russia are not good due to the reason that uh, in the wake of the ukraine russia war us and uh, some other major western countries have imposed very strict uh, sanctions against russia which have hit the russian economy very hard and uh, moreover uh, those sanctions and uh, their support to the ukraine has helped in prolonging the war further so that is why the rivalry between the us and russia has deepened further in the uh, present scenario so next is the relations between us and china if we talk about the relations between us and china so these relations are also not good at present the relations are in fact worsening further the cold war between the us and china is becoming more intense why one one reason is that uh, the us wants to increase its influence in the asia and uh, indo pacific region and uh, china is already a major player in asia and the indo pacific region and that is why us wants to contain china uh, and uh, moreover china is becoming more aggressive day by day seeing china's increased military and naval capabilities 
so and uh, china's aggression in the south china sea so there is a big question related with the uh, you can say security of the maritime routes so in the wake of all this there is a uh, there is a enmity which has grown between the us and china in these days so relations between us and india we all know that relations between us and india are improving day by day one major reason is that both us and india need each other in the present situation which is prevailing in the world so because of uh, india's size and its uh, geographical location us wants to have good relations with india one point is that and the second point is that uh, seeing uh, seeing india's tension which is prevailing at present with china and it is growing in factor so india also needs the support of the us so this is you can say a symbiotic relationship which is growing between the us and india in these days and uh, as far as the relations between china and india is concerned as i have already told that uh, tensions between india and china are uh, growing in fact the reasons there are so many factors one factor is china's increased presence in pakistan which is not having good relations with india second china pakistan economic corridor which uh, runs through pakistan occupied kashmir and indian territory which is under the illegal occupation of uh, pakistan third is china's string of pearls policy by which china is uh, encircling india from three sides and uh, the next is uh, the present border stand off in ladakh region between india and china uh, which is continue for more than 2 years now and uh, quadrilateral is another quadrilateral security dialogue is uh, another point of which india is a partner and uh, indo pacific economic framework a platform which has been formed by 14 nations of which india is a member in these days so seeing all these things and seeing china's growing presence in in the uh, you can say indian ocean uh, that is also a threat to india so in the wake of all these things we can say that the tensions between india and china are growing these days so the relations between the two countries are not so good at present and uh, the next is the uh, relations between russia and china no doubt in the present days after the uh, beginning of uh, the ukraine russia war the bonding between russia and china has increased uh, one reason is that uh, because due to the sanctions imposed by the us and uh, other major western powers russia was having no option but to align with china or to go closer to china that was the option with russia and in the wake of that uh, china is such a country that has provided some material and uh, moral support to russia as well and uh, the second point is that uh, seeing that the us and other major western powers are trying to isolate china in the region so in that way also china is having the least option but to move closer to russia so in the wake of all this the bonding between the russia and china is growing nowadays in fact has grown as well so this is the point there so the next is uh, the relationship between india and uh, russia no doubt uh, russia the earlier ussr ussr uh, remained a uh, very good partner of india it is a time tested friend of india reliable partner of india so far we can say even 
the USSR has uh, supported many times India uh, diplomatically on various international platform. At least uh, three times Russia has uh, exercised its veto power in UN Security Council in favor of India on Kashmir issue and once in 1961 when Portugal uh, brought a resolution in the UN Security Council demanding India to withdraw its forces from Goa. Even at that time, Russia used its veto power in favor of India, though at that time US, UK and uh, France were favoring the resolution brought by the Portugal. So this is the uh, scenario of the relations so far. And one more point is here that uh, Russia is a major defense supplier to India also. But uh, now what about the future relations between the two countries between Russia and India? At present, uh, in the present scenario, uh, what is uh, we can say in in this emerging world order. So there may be two options before India or uh, there can be two possibilities. One possibility is that uh, is the revival of the non-alignment because uh, US and China becoming two poles and the cold war between the two countries is going intense in these days and uh, in this bipolar world we can say there can be there are the chances of revival of the non-alignment again. So if the non-alignment revives, then we have to see that uh, whether India remains non-aligned in that scenario or India aligned itself with the, or India aligns itself with the US. That is what we want, uh, we have to see in the days to come. So. Uh, that is why so the future relations between India and Russia are uh, questionable now because uh, it is very much uh, you can say clear that uh, Russia can't go along with the US in the near future at least uh, and uh, Russia will go with the China. Th this is very much clear and uh, that is why so what India can do India has two options. One is it can prefer the non-alignment. It may remain non-aligned or it may go with the US. So it is having the two options. So India's future relations with Russia will depend on uh, the options will depend on which of the two options uh, it, India is going to pick up. So this is the whole thing. So in the in the wake of uh, all this discussion uh, which we have uh, made so far, so there are some new concerns for India. There are some new concerns for India and it has brought some new challenges to India as well. So now what are the concerns for India? So first and important concern for India is that the US uh, sorry that the Ukraine Russia war has exposed the strength and efficiency of Russian weapons in the Ukraine war uh, because uh, in the Ukraine Russia war the Russian weapons didn't perform as per expectation. So we know that uh, Russia so far remained the major supplier of uh, weapons and other military equipment to our country means India. So that is why the exposure of the strength and efficiency of uh, Russian weapons is a point of concern for India. And the next is uh, Russia's increased closeness to China during the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war and the vulnerability of India's borders to China and Pakistan. Russia is going closer to China as we have already discussed in the current scenario and uh, there is also tension between China and India which is growing in these days and India's relations with Pakistan are already not good. So that is why seeing the uh, bonding 
which is increasing between Russia and China and the vulnerability of India's borders to China and Pakistan. This is another important concern with uh, which India needs to address or which India needs to consider. Next is increasing intensity of Cold War between the US and China and India's growing association with the China. Uh, India's growing association with the, the US, sorry. India's growing association with the US. So, this point we have discussed already that uh, the Cold War between US and China is becoming more intense in the present days and uh, India's association with the US is growing and uh, that is why in that way since China is uh, is uh, one of the neighboring countries of India and uh, that is why this is a uh, uh, point of uh, concern for India in the present scenario, right? On the one hand, India's uh, tension with China is growing due to some issues, which are the issues. One is the border standoff in Ladakh region, uh, which I have already discussed. And uh, second is India's greater involvement with the US if we take the example of the quadrilateral security dialogue, Indo-Pacific economic framework and uh, some more examples can be there. So that is why in that way uh, India needs to be careful in the future. So now what are the challenges to India in this week? So what are the challenges to India? So one challenge to India is uh, what should be India's priorities in the current scenario? This is very much important because India needs to think because the new world order is is uh, emerging now and the equations are, are changing as we have seen that uh, the enmity between US and Russia has grown. The bonding between Russia and China has increased uh, and uh, the cold war between the US and China has deepened further and uh, India's tension with China has grown further and India's relations with the US are becoming better day by day. So in this wake, what should be India's priorities? This is important uh, challenge before India at present and uh, how does India needs to strategize? What are the options before India? What can India do in the present scenario and uh, how can India strategize? So next is how to address India's weakened position in the current scenario. So actually India's position in the current scenario has weakened due to two, three important points which we are going to discuss uh, uh, right now. So what has India's, how has India's position weakened? So first is in terms of uh, military equipment. So what is that? poor performance of Russia's weapons in its war against Ukraine, which we have already discussed. And so far, Russia remained the major defense supplier to India. This is the one point which discussed already. Second is Russia helped India to keep Indian military expenditure low as Russian equipment is uh, low priced. So this was a big support to Indian economy, we can say, because uh, India is having two important concerns. So one of the concerns is that is the India's national security because India's borders are not secure. That is why India cannot compromise with its defense preparedness or with its military strength. So India needs uh, modern equipment and weapons to uh, keep its, uh, uh, you can say, military up to date, to keep its defense forces up to date. That is there. And uh, so, and the and on on the we can say other hand, uh, India is a developing country which is not having so much funds, and uh, there are uh, uh, other challenges before India. That is the poverty, that is the high rate of unemployment, uh, low level of development of Indian economy. So all these challenges are there. So in that way, uh, so Russian supply to India in terms of the defense equipment and weapons which was low priced uh, that was a support to the Indian economy because by saving some funds from there India 
uh, was able to spend that money for the purpose of building infrastructure, economic development, removing poverty and creating unemployment, etc. So that was one of the important uh, points there. But in the present scenario, due to the sanctions against Russia, so one important point is that uh, uh, one is the, you can say, the strength of uh, Russian weapons as exposed during the war. And second important point in the current scenario which we are seeing due to the sanctions which have been imposed by the Western world against uh, Russia. So Russian companies are not uh, able to access the modern technology in these days. So, so we can say that is why in the days to come there is a question regarding the modernization of uh, Russian weapons. So in that case we can say that uh, this is a point of concern for India. Now, sanctions against Russian companies hamper their access to global technology. So, these are some uh, uh, points considering which we can say that in terms of military equipment, India's uh, position has weakened because if India moves to the Western world for purchasing the weapons or, uh, or uh, other defense equipment, we can say so those are very costly and those, those will increase an extra burden on on India's economy and obviously then India would have to compromise on subsidies, on, on some other welfare programs, on uh, infrastructure building, etc. So th this is one point. Another point is in terms of uh, foreign policy. Russia earlier the USSR always extended diplomatic support to India on various international platforms. So this is what we have already discussed at least three times the USSR exercised its veto power in the United Nations Security Council to support India on the Kashmir issue. This point also we have already discussed. Once in 1961 when Portugal proposed a resolution in the United Nations Security Council demanding India to withdraw its forces from Goa, the USSR used its veto power in India's favor. This is the point which we have already discussed. Okay, So in 1961, the countries like US, UK and uh, France, the permanent members of United Nations Security Council, those in fact favor, favored Portugal, but it was the Russia, the USSR at that time that uh, saved India, that supported India by using its veto power. So nowadays, weakened Russia may be less effective. So in the future, we can say, because Russia's positions has, a position has weakened now in the wake of the Ukraine conflict and uh, in the wake of the uh, very severe economic sanctions imposed on Russia by the Western world. So one point is that. Okay? And uh, this is the one important point. And second point is that uh, uh, perhaps in the days to come, the uh, voice of Russia would not be given that much weightage on the international platform. So this is how India uh, India has, uh, you can say, lost in terms of Russia uh, on the international, uh, sorry, on its foreign policy. Next is, uh, in the wake of growing friendship between Russia and China. This is the most important geostrategic challenge before India. In Ukraine-Russia war, when the major Western countries pushed Russia away, it was China that offered some material and uh, moral support to India. This is what we have already discussed that uh, during this Ukraine-Russia war, the US and uh, some other major Western countries imposed very strict economic sanctions against Russia and they pushed Russia away. Uh, they treated Russia as a rogue, we can say. And uh, in that scenario, it was China that offered some material and moral support to India and that is why Russia become closer to China. Even China today has very limited and uh, very limited option, very limited option and uh, that is to go with Russia since Western powers are trying to isolate China. So in the present scenario, because the Western powers, including the US, which are uh, 
trying to isolate China. They are trying to contain China in fact uh, in the Asia and the Indo-Pacific region. And uh, so in that way, uh, uh, you can say China has very limited option that is to go with Russia. So that is why in the days to come the bonding between the Russia and China uh, shall further deepen. And uh, one more important point which uh, is to be noted here that uh, US constant support to Taiwan and uh, the US is not recognizing the one China policy and uh, that is also a factor that is you can say irritating China and is uh, deepening the cold war between the US and China and uh, so that is why the increased bonding between Russia and China is quite natural in the days to come. So there is the possibility of a greater partnership between Russia and China in future and it would ultimately play against India's interests. So if India goes very close to, uh, sorry, if Russia very close, uh, goes very close to China in the days to come uh, and uh, if uh, India doesn't remain non-aligned and uh, if it, uh, uh, you can say, moves closer to the US, uh, then obviously it would be difficult for Russia to support India in that way as it was doing earlier. So in that case, uh, if the bonding between the Russia and China grows, then it would ultimately uh, play against India's interests because China and Pakistan as, are already very good friends and uh, seeing the China's huge investment in Pakistan, uh, it seems that in future the Pakistan will remain aligned to China. So, so therefore, if this triangle between the Russia, China and uh, Pakistan matures, so then that would not be good for the interests of India. So this is how we can say that uh, uh, there that India's position has weakened in the present days. So now what are the options before India? Option number one, in the China-Russia-US triangle, India may do by creating a smarter balance. So this is what India has expertise in doing. In the past also, India is known for creating a smart balance keeping itself non-aligned in the bipolar world when there was very intense cold war between US and the USSR. So point, as, as India has preferred to abstain from voting on various UN resolutions brought against Russia during the Ukraine-Russia war. So, so far India is trying to uh, playing smart, you can say. In fact, India has played smart because uh, uh, many resolutions were brought in the United Nations by various countries uh, against Russia in the wake of the current Ukraine-Russia war and in those resolutions India preferred to abstain from voting because India cannot ignore the good friendship with uh, Russia and uh, Russia is very much important for India's interests. So that is why one point is that so India can keep moving on in the similar way in future also. On US leader Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan when the political environment heated up, India played a very calculated moves, uh, preferred to remain quiet. So recently Nancy Pelosi visited Taiwan and uh, on her visit to Taiwan the political environment was heated up. There were uh, uh, some, there was a very severe reaction from China's side okay? and uh, many statements were issued also by China. So that is there and uh, in that wake India played very calculated move and it preferred to remain quiet right? because India knows that uh, uh, because China is India's very close neighbor. So that is why uh, you can say uh, seeing China's proximity to India, geographical proximity to India, we can say that uh, 
India cannot afford to ignore Chinese interests at present and this is what India is doing and uh, neither it can afford to ignore US interests as well. So that is why the better approach for India was to keep quiet, keep silent in on this particular issue and India did that and uh, this is the one option that India can uh, exercise in the present scenario that is it can uh, you can say play smarter by creating a balance there. The next is option two, non-alignment hedging or alignment with China is not going to serve India's interests seeing because uh, non-alignment hedging or alignment with China is not uh, going to solve India's interests in the emerging world order. Why? Because there are two, three important points. One is China's aggressive approach. China is becoming very aggressive day by day. China is threatening, in fact. Uh, we know that uh, for uh, more than two years now, there is a border standoff in Ladakh region between uh, Indian and uh, Chinese military. So China's strategy of encircling India in the Indian Ocean, China's growing presence in the, we can say, Indian Ocean, that is also a cause of concern for India. And so that is why uh, what India can do now, India can move closer to US, seeing its uh, uh, security interest and uh, other national interests, you can say, and uh, furthering the same policy which India is already pursuing. This is what India is doing at present, as we have already discussed that uh, now India is moving closer to the US day by day, seeing the current scenario, seeing its current relations with China, etc. And uh, because the US is the only power that is stronger than China. Okay, you know, China is the uh, second largest uh, military power or second largest power in terms of defense in India next to the US. So moreover, India and US share a common interest in balancing China. So there are, there is commonality of interest between India and uh, US because the growing China or uh, the aggression of China or uh, irrational growth of China, you can say, that is neither acceptable to India and nor acceptable to the US. Both the countries want to contain China. Uh, US wants to contain China because of its, you can say, own interests, because it uh, wants to grow its influence in the Asia and Indo-Pacific region. And uh, India wants to contain China because uh, it is becoming threat to India's national security. So India needs to grow roots in deep engagement with other countries also, such as Japan and countries in the West. So in the current scenario, what India should do, India needs to increase its association with other countries as well and one of those countries is uh, Japan and there can be some other countries in the western world. So that is what India should do at present. So third option that is increase in defense capabilities obviously because it will take time for India to uh, grow its association with other western countries to that extent that uh, if India is threatened by China, they may con come directly for the support of India. So it will take uh, a long time yet. So that is why in the very short term, what is the better option before India that is to increase it in its defense capabilities. Okay, So how can India increase its defense capabilities? One is reforms in terms of military modernization, moving towards a lower headcount and better equipment and training. Lowering the headcount will reduce the economic burden on India and by saving the money from there, India can uh, go ahead for the modernization of weapons and other defense equipments. So this is the one point. Working seriously on a new level of uh, defense procurement and uh, defense economics. Defense economics means whatever the limited defense budget we are having, seeing India's economic position at present. So we should try to 
spend that fund in such an optimal way that uh, we could be able to maximize in terms of uh, strength of our defense forces. So this is what is the defense economics and uh, bringing military institutional reforms to plug any leakages in the system. Military institutional reforms are long overdue in India and uh, it is important because we are uh, having the very limited resources, right? Uh, it, it means we cannot uh, increase India's uh, defense expenditure in, you can say, absolute dollar terms, uh, right, in uh, uh, equal to China or that to the United States. So that is why what we can do, uh, we can uh, the focus on the best utilization of the available funds and obviously for that purpose we must have to plug any leakages which are there in the system and military institutional reforms are required for that purpose and shifting gear in favor of more expensive modern and uh, efficient western defense hardware to the extent possible uh, we should move towards the uh, west as far as the uh, you can say uh, defense hardware is concerned or defense equipment is concerned because they are having the better technology, they are having the best technology in comparison with various other countries. So this demands an increase in military expenditure. So obviously for that purpose in the short term India needs to increase its military expenditure. So how it can increase as we have already discussed, one is exercising the defense economics by the opti uh, by optimizing the utilization of the limited resources and uh, second is by setting the priorities in a very serious manner and third is by uh, bringing uh, military institutional reforms to plug any leakages in the system and the fourth is to the extent possible by increasing its uh, defense budget by compromising on some other things uh, which are not going to affect that much uh, India's poverty, employment or uh, economic development. So India uh, needs to strike a smart balance now between the economic development and other welfare measures and uh, on the other hand uh, which is the national interest of India which is the security, national security of India. So India uh, needs to strike a smart balance in the days to come in these things. So, and next, uh, India needs to learn from Ukraine's military strategy about how to counter the superior numbers. So if we see that uh, in comparison with uh, Russia, Ukraine was having less number of defense forces. Ukraine was having less number of uh, fighter jets and uh, Ukraine was having lesser number of weapons as well. So despite that, uh, it is due to the military strategy of the Ukraine that uh, the war has been prolonged uh, till this time uh, since its beginning in the February. So India needs to learn from that also because if we compare with China, right, so China is also having the superior numbers in comparison with India, right. China's military strength or uh, number of military personnel, defense personnel are much higher than that India is having. China is having more fighter planes than India. China is having more number of weapons than India. China is having more number of uh, naval ships in comparison with India. So it means uh, China is having the superior numbers and India uh, should learn from the Ukraine's military strategy about countering with the superior numbers if any type of uh, threat emerges to India from China in future. So. This is all about the various options before India and in the wake of these options, India can strategize itself, India can, uh, you can say, uh, work out a strategy that uh, how it needs to behave in the days to come. So this is all. I hope 
you must have enjoyed this lecture thank you very much all the best we'll see you again